This is it. Lights out and away we go. That was like the least enthusiastic David Croft style intro ever. Looks the under breaking. And this is like that. We're now in, up into second place. Rosberg down the road now. Went on, gone to fuel mix rich on this. They try and get him up f towards turn three here. Only outside of him, and we got him. That worked out beautifully. And I think Vettel's come through as well. Well driven from Seb there as well. And Mass is up to third. No, Rosberg is now. Mass and Rosberg, the number two is dueling in and out now. But I know a lot of people want to ask me, um, you know, why did I choose Mercedes over Sauber? And it was close. It was really close. Um, the thing is, is that... Um, I suppose, I suppose, what's the best way of me explaining this? I let the viewers have, have, have a big say in this, and I counted up all the people that made suggestions, and it was about 60-40 in favour of Mercedes. So, close, you know, the majority, but not exactly conclusive, which is kind of annoying. So, then I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd have a good, long, hard think. I actually asked my workmates this as well, actually, who watch me on YouTube, and uh, they were quite unsure as well what, what I should do. Um, and in the end, I kind of just uh, chose what will, what will probably produce the more entertaining gameplay. And I thought going here would do that. Because, you know, it's more battles up the front. It's the same logic Formula 1 fans use in real life, you know. It's like when Vettel was leading all those races during the second half of last of this of this past season in real life. They were like, oh, you know, Vettel, Vettel leading makes the race boring. And I'm like, well, yeah, to a degree. But also, it's also to do with the fact that, you know, a lot of F1 fans believe a race is boring if there isn't a battle for the lead up the front. So, you know, I can see why they would think in that way. Okay, I'm going to take, going to take the inside line here because Vettel hasn't got the top speed to pass me by the looks of it. So let's go back over here and break for the corner. Bit wide. Got away with that one a little bit. Not enough, got quite enough room for Vettel to come through. But yeah, I mean, having a battle up front will probably make things more interesting. Um, rather than me being the mid-tier guy constantly defending, I'm actually going to be in a range where I'm somewhat more competitive because Mercedes is fast, but I'm a not particularly fast driver, so it kind of cancels each other out. Like, people, I think people were saying, oh, why did you choose Mercedes? And I'm like, well, like, people were saying, oh, I saw Ben's play through, you know, Ben, a.k.a. Tia Matt Marduk, who is, you know, one of the top guys in the community, and... I saw Alex Zafro and I was like, this seems about right for a guy of my skill level. I know people seem to like to constantly make out that I'm not a particularly good player. Newsflash, I agree. <laughs> I've said it time and time again in my videos. I'm not a competitive racer. I never have been. I'm a casual player with a personality. That's always been my thing. I'm, I'm a lot better at MotoGP than I am at Formula 1, believe it or not. I could be one that I could be potentially one of the best in the world at um, MotoGP if I really put the time in time trial wise, but I don't. I'm, I'm just too casual a player like that. So that's just that's just kind of the truth to that, really. Um, don't get me wrong. I would like to, you know, I would like to be a better player if I really wanted to, but unfortunately, the truth is, I'm just I'm just not. I'm not going to pretend like I am either. Well, that actually had to, see, had to ease off under the IRS there. That's kind of weird. Ugh. Bit hard under braking there, but we got away with that one. People going freaking six laps on the option tyre is, is, is going to be quite interesting down here as well. But I'm sorry for those guys that said you wanted me to stay on, and I didn't. I'm sorry. You have to kind of understand this was going to be a decision that's, that was going to hurt somebody here. I mean, I can't please everyone, and that's always been a thing with YouTube. I wish I could, but I realized a long time ago I just can't do that. So I've got to do what I think is best for this series. 
And I think having a storyline where I can run for the championship, you know, despite being quite a long way back still, probably makes more sense. I say probably. It's not a certainty to be. I wish it did, but you know. I'm probably too far away to win it. I mean, there's nine races to go. I'm 83 points off. I've got to take over nine points a race out of the, the leading bunch to get up there. So it's probably not going to happen. But still, it's fun to try, right? The only thing that was really holding me back from doing this was I'm taking Hamilton out of the picture for at least half a season, which is kind of a bummer because that's just the way Mercedes is. Mercedes are, are probably the only team left in Formula 1, in real life at least at the moment, in this game, with two elite drivers. Because Rosberg is a ridiculous qualifier in this game. So that's kind of that's kind of the only real downside to all this is that I wish I could um, be in a better position in terms of doing this, and I wish that I was a little bit faster. I wish I could be on that level of a guy like a Ben or or an Alex Gillen, but I'm not. That's just that's just the truth. Oh, that was a bit slow coming through there. But he's gone through, Vettel through, into the lead. How can Vettel be running on newer tyres than us? These are our qualifying tyres. It doesn't make any sense, engineer. Oh dear. There's any problem now. I'm in the dirty air now. Ah, crap. Okay, okay, hang on. I've got two flax packs and I'm pretty afraid to use them. And our Vettel's already cleared DRS. I'm in big trouble now. Oh, dear. Well, let's try it. It's a bit of a reach from here, but hey, what can you do? Jeez. This is this is going to be a reach from here. Vettel did a 51-2. What? How is that even possible? He was stuck behind me for a good chunk of that lap, and I know he got DRS, but a 51-2. His lap was 2.2 seconds faster than mine. I did a 53-4. Oh, my God. Hmm. Am I really that bad at this game? Jesus. That didn't help. And now Alonso's coming along. See, people, switching me, switching me to Mercedes doesn't automatically mean I'm going to win every race. Trust me, you have no idea. Like, you guys are putting way too much faith in my ability. <laughs> um, I always thought this was going to happen. Like, I'm not strong enough to consistently beat even the expert AI. As Alonso comes down the inside... God, car understeers badly under these conditions, man. Size on the brink of going. Nico couldn't land the inside here. Might as well burn my curves now if I'm pitting this lap. Tires have definitely gone here. Just got to come round the back of uh, the bus stop here. Now, this pit entry is awful, so this could be some problems. Top two both in, it seems. There we go. Tell you what, I did this in qualifying. I actually broke my front wing doing this. I know I'm not the only one that's done this before. So I think Rosberg's had to go on. 
There's Alonso coming past as well. I'm sure there's Vettel up ahead too. So we're back out in, I think, in ninth place. Seventh place. Just behind Adrian Suttil. He's going to have DRS on me. That's not going to help. Oh my god, Felipe, whoa. Had to ease off there. I didn't even see Felipe there on my back. So Alonso's at full revs at the minute. I might as well, because my deal of me getting a podium are pretty much in the hands of Nico Rosberg at this point. Dude was on dude was on lap four, used options, quite heavily worn, and he did a 51-2. Hmm. That's a concern. I have not got that kind of speed in me. That's astonishing to be honest. Oh well. Guess I gotta work guess, guess I gotta keep practicing, keep working on my game. I think my headset's, my headset's about to slip one second. There we go. Right. Let's try this again. Fifth, fourth. There's Rosberg coming out, and there's me coming out ahead of him. So I've come out in third, but he's going to have DRS. You've taken third place, third. Okay, this could also be a problem. And here comes Rosberg now. Whoa! Winning for a corner cut. Around the outside, maybe. Well, we actually, he banged wheels there. He hit my side pod and then he spun it. But I got him back for that. It's like Vettel and Alonso are in their own separate battle now. Hopefully they can switch other down a little bit. That'd be quite handy. Got a... Alonso is reading in Seb, my word. Come on, Dre. Let's see what you got. 3.6 seconds back from the lead in two. And I'm going to be ended up taking Rosberg and whoever's behind him with me here. Okay, let's see what we got here. Personal best, that's a 52.5. It's actually Weber back there as well. That's the last guy I want behind me. And that was a corner cut? Oh, come on, game. Gap's actually down to 3.2, though, so there is actually an element of, of Vettel holding Alonso up, but it's coming up through a rouge here. Alonso will probably find the way through with DRS. Speaking of which, so is Nico Rosberg. Actually, no, he's actually eased off this time around. Uh, Alonso has passed Vettel. Okay. Looks like the story of my weekend has been I'm pretty good round the middle bit and in the corners. But it also seems to be that uh, at the moment I am seem to be losing time on the straights and I put a fresh engine in the car this weekend, which is really bizarre. But hey, what do I know?
Hmm. Took free tennis out of him in that sector. But down here in the last corner, I just like sectors one and three, I struggle. I lose time on the straights, and I don't know why that is. The middle sector, I'm quite strong. I might be the strongest in the field down there. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Still got a lap of extra fuel in the car as well, which kind of comes in handy. That was a 52 free. I the thing is, I've actually nearly broken Weber as well. Chad comes in handy. Up in the fuel mix to free, and let's see what we got. I think I broke Weber. I don't think he's got DRS on me. And Rosberg does. Rosberg should come through any second here. Hopefully. And I think he has. Also, sorry to disappoint your fans at the show, but 0% uh, chance of rain this time around. Sorry about that. I know I've had rain affect me the last three race weekends, but not today. This one's all on my own back. It's Vettel and Alonso just, just back and forth, head to head here. Wouldn't that be a cool thing to see in actual Formula 1 again? Nah, screw it, it wouldn't be because everyone would just say, Alonso's better because his car is weaker, blah, 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 blah. The amount of times I've had that fed down my throat for being the Vessel fan is off the charts. Shut up! I know Alonso's got a weaker car. Doesn't mean he's winning. Jesus, doesn't mean he would win if he was in the Red Bull either. Get over yourselves. Anywho. That was a 51-7. And actually lost time to the front two. What sense does that make? The AI are weird like that. They really are. But, if this has proven one thing, it's that I can keep up with, with the top cars here. So this is going to be about right for me. Difficulty level-wise, speed-wise, this is kind of where I need to be. Which is... I guess a good thing? I don't know. I'll let you be the judge on that one. It's still Alonso from Vettel by the looks of it further back. Again, I lost nine tenths of a second there to the front two. How does that make sense? I just don't know where I'm losing this time. It's weird. I just don't get it. But hey, my new aim is to defend third. It looks like Rosberg's a bit close this time around. Oh, Vettel's passed him. No! Alonso's binned it! Alonso's out! Something's happened up there between Vettel and Alonso. Did Alonso choke it? Was there contact? We'll never know, obviously, but... That's now put me in second. I'll take it. I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong. But that that's a shocker. Wow, that's a nice surprise, I suppose. A rare Alonso retirement. Hmm. Someone up there in the racing gods is clearly smiling at me tonight. I lost power coming out of there because I went off the track. Rosberg's going to be game for a pass. He's going to have DRS into the source. Uh, not quite. He's going to be all over me here if he did DRS. He's actually got quite a slow run out of that corner as well, which kind of comes in handy. But Vettel is leading the way here, and he's probably going to take the win here. But can I hold on to second or third? Because Rosberg and Weber are literally right behind, and Rosberg is going to be coming through any second here. Got to stay tight to the inside line. I'm going to have to make Rosberg work for this one. He's coming through now, and Weber's going to want a piece as well.
And we're okay. He's able to defend that one just. That was close. Fuel that's a bit low, but we're okay. We're in optimal still. I'm strong for here, so it's just a matter of can I hold on through the bus stop. The first win is not quite there yet. I think Vettel just caught me too early and uh, better man won today by the looks of it. Surrounded by the Germans. <laughs> That five seconds clear. Rosberg six temps back though, so we're looking quite good here. Just got to try and bring it through the bus stop, and we should be okay. It's actually gotten brighter over here as well as the race gone on. How about that? Just don't choke it, Dre. Whoa, we're okay. We're okay. Definitely okay. Vettel takes the win. We'll take second. That'll do. Not a bad result there. Um, could have been a bit stronger, could have been a win again, but I will take that. That's a good start. There was a lot of promising signs there. I'm able to pretty much match the AI when I want to. Where did I get the 51.7 in the end there? And where did Vettel get the 52.2 in the first stint? I still, to this day, do not understand how he did that. Anywho. A second, that'll do. It's not quite as impressive now because I have actually had two second places with Sauber earlier in the year, but that's not a bad start. Um, they wanted me to come second. I came in second. I started fifth. I think that'll do quite nicely. So, championship standings. We're now 90 points off the top, but we're now close to the top end of the field now. We're only 11 points behind Nico and uh, 26 behind Mark. Uh, Vettel extends his lead to 27 points now after getting that win and Alonso getting the donut. Um, constructors wise, I guess we're now in second place, uh, 43 behind Red Bull. Um, Lotus fourth, Sauber now in fifth place there with 200 points, 200 points off the top now, and, and McLaren only a point behind, so that's one to look out for as well. But yeah, second place, that's not bad. It's it's not wonderful, and again, I kind of feel bad because a mistake cost me a real shot at the win because me and me and Vettel were about the same in terms of pace until that fourth lap where Vettel pulled out that lap out of nowhere like it was like a qualifying lap it was insane but uh yeah second will do nicely and uh yeah on to the next one there's Vettel gives us the victory finger hooray now I see why fans are so pissed with the finger because when you're on the other end of it it's not a good sign there's a joke there somewhere I'm sure someone will find one he he he. So yeah, not bad. Beat teammate, came second. That'll do. Um, yeah, I think I'll. I think that's pretty much that. So um, until next time, I've been Harrison 101. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. For Monza, hooray! Until then, sign out, guys. Take care.